So welcome, guys. He's oh, here. Huh? <laughs> so sorry. So sorry. By surprise. No, yo, I heard Negroni week and I was like, oh my god, Negroni sounds so good. Scotch. 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 And then I was just like, Scotch. The spirit box. But guys, this is it. Remember me when I did this review of Glenn Glossock? The first person in Texas to try this Scotch. They were so kind to give it to me. Or Jen, she's amazing. She's sitting right yeah, there. Shout out. Shout, shout out. out. She's amazing. She saved him for me. <laughs> but now I have the man, the legend, Rory. The king. The king. The king of Scotch. The king of Scotch. <laughs> for real. Scottish. 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 Uh, my last, last name is Glasgow, but I am from oh Edinburgh. Oh my God. It's not a stage name. I've been accused of that, but I was born in this, in this realm. So yeah, Rory <laughs> Glasgow. I was, you know, whenever uh, I received these scotch samples, yeah. I was very thrown because, you know, I'm a big, I'm a big whiskey lover. Uh -huh. Every, everybody knows that. But uh, I, I drink a lot of bourbon and I love scotch, but I'm very, very particular about scotch. Yes, you have to be. I mean, I love bourbon as well. Didn't know I loved bourbon until I came to the US. And then I just saw how much bourbon there was. Like the bar I worked at in Scotland, we had maybe like an old bottle of Old Grandad and then a couple of other bottles of bourbon, but that was it. Coming to America, really? I was like, yeah, with nothing. And then, obviously, it's Scotland, right? When in Rome, yeah. you drink scotch. And so that opened my eyes up to bourbon. And I love bourbon now. But scotch, I think there's just so much more spectrum of flavor. Yeah. I think you have to yes. be particular, right? Because bourbon makes really good within the spectrum that it works in. And they have to do something very well. Yeah. In a very, within very specific laws. Exactly. They're working with a tight kind of, uh, kind of spectrum what they can work in. But scotch can be so many different things. And we'll try that today. Yeah. With, yeah. Uh, with Ben Riex. So one thing that I love about Scotch is that how complicated, because you know, in the United States we have four seasons, right? In yeah. Kentucky, you get the four seasons. Uh -huh. In Scotch, in Scotch. In Scotch, <laughs> yes. In Scotch land. In the land of alcohol. Scotch land, the, land of the alcohol. tape, Scotch. <laughs> <laughs> That's why it's named after, it's the best tape out there. Yeah. In Scotland, you have one season and yeah. you have to make the best out of it, you know That's what right. I mean? That's right, That's right. You, hey, we, we do get, a little window of summer. We get like a, a, a two week <laughs> summer and then it's back to being, you know. Yeah, far uh, and rain. what I mean by this is that in Kentucky you get the expansion, the contraction yeah. of the barrel. So which much. Is... Yeah, like, and that's the thing that blew my mind going to Kentucky. It's like if it's summer, super hot during the day, cools down in the evening, and yeah. then in the wintertime it's so cold that nothing's really happening. So you get that big flavor back and forth, yes. back and forth. In Scotland, and all my bourbon friends make fun of me because they're like, it took you 12 years to make that scotch. It took us four years to make this amazing yeah, bourbon. But I'm like, it takes gradual, gradual maturation yeah. of So And you have many things to play with. Uh, bourbon, you can only play with brand new American white oak. And your or, mash bill, and your mash bill, and some yeast strain, yeah. and, and that's really about it. Um, and then obviously the heat coming into play as well, like you mentioned. Of course, yeah. But in scotch, in single malt, as we'll find here, you can use peat, which I actually have a tiny piece of peat oh, here. We'll talk about this. You know, I had never, can, can I? Yeah, yeah, can I? of course you can, please. <laughs> um, that's awesome. Yeah, dude. that's a piece of peat. So that, it doesn't, say, I have yeah. not burned that in a while. So it, if I burned it, which I would not do in here, I don't want to set your fire alarm off, but. <laughs> I'll give you one. We're trying to, we're trying to shut down for the day. <laughs> uh, so if you burn that, you get the lovely aromatics. And yeah. that's what we dry our barley with. Not always, but sometimes if we're making peated Scotch whiskey, we'll use that. Um, and we can talk about that as well. That's, yeah, uh, I, think, I think that's like one of my go-tos. Beaded scotch has been and that big flavor. Yeah, it's so, a big flavor. It's super yeah. intricate. Super like uh, yeah. it has kind of like flows like smoky little bit of heat. Yeah. But also it has like sometimes some as of them. As a fun joke, I don't know. I've never understood what people mean by it tastes like a bandaid. <laughs> like well, there's some reason to it. So we'll actually talk about this um, when we get into the smoky stuff over here. But the peat. So where we're taking this, this is actually from the northeast of Scotland. Yeah. And yeah. so. This is about a meter down into the peat bog. And so this is about a thousand years worth of decay of vegetation. That's and crazy. so all of these pieces of wood, if they were on the surface exposed to oxygen, they would decay and they would be gone. Of course. And because they're mummified, petrified in here, we're burning that and infusing whatever was there in that area a thousand years ago. And in this part of Scotland where Ben Riek's from in the northeast of Scotland, yeah. you go back a thousand years and there was pine forests up there. So releasing the smoke into the barley, and then taking that barley, running it through the production, what you're getting is this kind of sweet wood, almost like bonfire, campfire, pine smoke. But if you go to Isla, your Band-Aid comment, which you're not yes. wrong, you're totally right. So that peat, 
there was historically, and even now, there's no trees there. Yeah. So that peat would be almost totally black, and it would be almost entirely comprised of moss mm. and maybe some sea kelp and seaweed. And so when you burn that, that's why you get that very coastal, medicinal, iodine band-aid now. Exactly. Yeah. And some people love that flavor. I love it myself. And people love it. And I think for beginners in single malt, almost like if you gave someone, and I always use the beer analogy, if you are trying to get someone into something, People start with lager, them into pilsner. It. You would never start with like a triple hop tasty yeah. IPA because yeah, that's just going to pop. So it's a mouthful. On yeah, that note, it's like giving the bourbon barrel aged 15% uh, freaking like, no, don't do that. Yeah, exactly. You want to start with someone light, easy and approachable. So let's start on that note. This is the perfect segue. This is Benriac malting season. So if we're just sticking on the beer note for a second, I've kind of come 360 with my beer journey. I feel like I've gone from like, everyone starts with lager and pills, and then you go to like IPAs and you go to stouts. I've come back around and my favorite beer right now is trying to find that perfectly crafted pilsner, right? Yeah. And that's the, one of the hardest beers to make. Crystal clear and crisp and clean. And, and this whiskey for me is like that. It's all the focus is on the malt. Yeah. It's not peaty at all. No smoke mm -mm. that's coming through in this. And it's just really honing in on the distillery you know, profile. It has like this really like really nice salinity to it, like smell to it, like it's yeah. a really good like fresh crisp. Freshness, yeah. yeah, yeah. It's exactly. very like almost like it's kind of weird to say, but it's like an ocean breeze, you know what I mean? Yeah. Where it As he was you saying it, that's when I was having the first sip. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I got that iodine kind of little note with a little bit of bitterness to it. Tiny bit of bitterness, yeah. Yes. I understand. So wow. give you the little little rundown on this one. So wow. this is actually a very special whiskey. Um, all whiskey is special for many different of reasons, course. but this one particularly special. This is Benriac malting season, and actually even more special, this is our first edition. So we're now on our third edition, so this is quite rare now, because you can only really find it if it's still available. Yeah. It's, I'll give you the specs on it, and by all means this would be, if I told you just the specs alone without you tasting it and smelling it, you'd be like, mm, it's probably going to be quite a rough single malt. So this is about eight or nine years old. Okay. Um, it's only matured in a bourbon cask and a virgin cask, so a brand new barrel. Mm -hmm. And it's almost 100 proof. I think it's coming in at 48.7. Now, you know what? I, I, if you were to ask me, because I'm a proof queen, we've had this conversation. Yeah. I'm like a big proof. Mm, anyways, more flavor. This doesn't, yeah. this doesn't taste, this doesn't drink like a. Nah, like 100 proof. No. No, no, no it really it doesn't. doesn't. It's very explosive. It was immediately went to your mouth. It just like it takes over everything. So subtle. Yeah. Yeah. So, so this is actually all the barley that has gone to so single malt, right? It's 100%. There's no mash bill. It's all barley that has been malted, and almost every distillery in Scotland will use a third party to malt their barley. Because back in the day, when historically speaking, distilleries, what they would have done is actually malted their own barley on site on their own floor maltings. But because just, you know, as production has increased, we just can't sustain that same way doing it in-house. So we just do it with a third party, right? They malt the barley for us, we buy it, and then we mill it, mash it, ferment it, distill it. Yeah. This stuff, once a year, for a few weeks of the year, we actually get guys in that have been doing this for years, generations, their family have been doing this, and they'll actually floor malt the barley by hand. Oh and this God. whiskey is entirely made up of floor malted barley. And there's only 11 distilleries in Scotland that continue that today. And what you're drinking is basically hand malted barley done in house, um, which is incredible. And it just makes yeah. it's so most whiskeys for me, they focus on the cask, they focus on the peat. Yes. This is all about the malt and it just shines well, the, through. The most important part, your, what you put in, your outcome is going to be uh, depends on that. Yeah. I know there are things on the way in the middle that, Of course, yeah. yeah but, but this is like the fun, this is like the building block, right? The first yeah. Play, yeah, building the, block. The pillar. Yeah, the first pillar. And if you can't build on that, I mean, have like no foundation. And there's no hiding on this either. Like you're not hiding behind the smoke, you're not hiding behind the casks. It's all about the distillery profile and the malt. It is beautiful. It's beautiful, it's beautiful, it's beautiful, beautiful man. Well, cheers yeah, cheers to the first thing. one. Cheers to oh, the yeah. first one, man. Cheers. I appreciate I, I appreciate sharing this with us yeah. because uh, it's Deuce. a very unique scotch. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah, it's a crazy scotch. It's, it's, the profile it's, is really insane. So this is Lovely. the first time that I probably taste a scotch that has that bitter note that I was mentioning right away. Yeah. That's yeah. the very first, but it's in the best way possible. You know what I mean? And it's not boozy because it's a high proof and it's a young whiskey, and you'd expect it to be quite yeah, alcohol harsh, forward. Bit, yeah, you know, burn a harsh. Whenever but. you whenever you have a young scotch or even other bourbons and whiskeys, you're like ah. Uh, 
this is this feels this feels young. You know exactly, what I mean? it feels young. And I've had some whiskeys that are 20 years old that feel young than mm -hmm. they are. Yeah. Um, so it's really just about quality of your spirit, quality of your ingredients, and quality of also cask management. Right. What's exactly. going on in the warehouse? Um, and they've done an amazing job with this whiskey. So good. So. Yeah, there's only a few handful, there's a handful of distilleries left in Scotland that do this, so we continue to do it. Yeah, that's that, that goes to tell you guys that not everything is age. Yes. Age is not everything. Exactly. It's a great point. I mean, it, product. It, it, play, yeah. it plays a, a role, but it's not everything. Yeah, it's, uh, and actually, it's kind of like, I mean, there's some really great whiskeys out there that, you know, you see that are like 30, 40 years old, and they're amazing. But I want to know what that whiskey was like before it got to 40. I want to yeah. see when it was 20, when it was 16, when it was 10. Yeah, yeah, the... Let's go back in time. And this is like, and it's nice that we're starting our journey here because we're going to taste the first building block of what then will come in the rest of these whiskeys here. So, nice. Let, so let me uh, give them a rinse real quick, guys, yeah. so we can proceed to the next one. Yeah, Ben Riek is all about that, that fruit character, and that yeah. really just shines through in a lovely way there. Because it kind of reminds me of like a weird, like, a summer fruit salad. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yes, yeah. exactly. And like, dude, I can I can picture myself sitting down outside in the porch, smoking my cigar, that's what you want. a Connecticut leaf, and then just like being like, beautiful. That's beautiful. it. Beautiful. That, that is, I mean, obviously these can be enjoyed any time of year. But for me, that one there, it's fresh, it's zesty, it's zingy. It's almost like I just want to sit on the porch, kind of spring going into summer. It's getting a little bit hot out there. Yeah. It's fresh. That's what I want. Yeah. And then no. as you go into winter time. It's an eye opener for sure. Yeah, beautiful. It's, it's beautiful uh, scotch. Should we go into? Uh, well, let's talk a little bit. Actually, let me mention what Ben Riek is. So I yeah. didn't really get into the distillery yes, we please. launched into. So <laughs> Ben Riek, it's a Speyside distillery. So it's in the northeast of Scotland, and really what defines us as being kind of a an eclectic distillery. When we think of Speyside as a region in Scotland, mm -hmm. yeah, we think of albeit. There's about 50 distilleries in that area, so it's one of the most kind of concentrated regions in Scotland. So many distilleries up there making all sorts of different whiskey. But typically speaking, Speyside is not smoky, not heavily peated anyway. Mm -hmm. It's more apples and pears, lemon, honey, vanilla. That's okay. what we typically think of. Benrique, as you found, that's perfectly Speyside for me, that malting season. Mm. But we also do peated whiskey, heavily yeah. peated Speyside, which we'll find at the end. But we do lots of different cask types as well. So bourbon and virgin casks, we found with that one. Let's go to the 16 and open that. Oh my you want to pour God. this one? Yes, please. Yeah, crack into it. Uh, it's got to be this one, right? That's the one, yeah. So uh, we just launched, the, relaunched this actually in the US and globally this year. Uh, it went out of stock back in 2015. We actually discontinued it because we ran out. Yeah. Obviously, it takes a while to get that stock back. Um, thank you so much, sir. Thank you. Mm -hmm. um, this one came out and I, I have I love the old 16 and so I was curious to see how the new 16 was going to be and our master blender her name's Rachel Barry whoa phenomenal lady um, in the industry she is 30 years in this smells yeah. like uh, this has like a like sorry a, no no no, no I love the reaction this is where I, I love this I love seeing people you know, this it's like up. all of a sudden Rory becomes like yeah. second like, yeah. like <laughs> focus on that whiskey man that's what <laughs> I'm so excited up this no like, no like, undertone, like a little bit of, like almost like a subtle camera like an apple it's like what I smell immediately apple, so apple yeah that, it's like then we like, apple you know it reminds me of Martinelli apple juice yeah, 100%. Yeah. It's that yeah. sweet golden apple juice. Yes, yeah, Martinelli. Yep. So, better okay. start paying us Martinelli. <laughs> <laughs> so, wow. there's also a flavor in here that I love. And actually, I'm getting more apple now you've said it, but there's a, there's a butter. So, imagine this, right? You're in the cinema or the movies, yeah. and you've got a bag of popcorn, and you've been sitting watching the movie, and you look down at the bottom of the bag, and you've got all those buttery kernels at the bottom. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That is buttered popcorn yes. kernels. It is. You're nice. absolutely right. And you know, you might sometimes you might be influenced by something that people say. Yeah. But 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 if it's not there, it's not there. You know what exactly. I mean? Exactly. Like, yeah. It just takes, takes someone just to go make that connection. Because and then boom. Have you ever had that? You pick up that kernel and you bite it, and it gives you that bitterness. Shouldn't do that, but we do it anyway. I know. It's exactly. <laughs> yeah. And once again, I'm going to that bitterness again. Yeah. Which it feels like is that butter popcorn, but when you bite it, you get that bitter freaking thing from the, mm. the corn. It's almost like you get it at the side of your tongue there, where mm -hmm. that savoriness just it sends all that sweet fruit note 
and elevates it. Yes. Yes. Yeah, that also, I feel like every time I sip on this, I'm like salivating like pretty crazy. Yeah, yeah as well. a lot. Like it's like coming out from like like where the, the molars are, yeah, and then go straight to the front. Come straight but, down. But it's really nice, but it also reminds me of like, what apple is to be honest because there is high amount of acidity in apple yeah especially like yep. a green apple the granny smith apple yeah, yeah. Like, yep. it has like that bite to it which is really nice 100 uh, percent. it's is really beautiful. fresh yeah. yeah it is beautiful i'm it's, so happy that you're here like uh, so i got a quiz let's see if you can guess what do you think the abv or the proof depending on how you want to do it abv or proof okay. on this you know i'll have to look at the bottle hopefully no, no, you no. can't see it from no, here no no because uh i think it will surprise you So if I was drinking this, and if I, if my untrained palate, I was like, this has to be about a forty-three percent alcohol. Mm -hmm. But that's my untrained palate, you know. Okay. What I, mean? I feel this is gonna be sitting around the forty-eight percent. Okay, forty-eight. You want to take a wee guess? I was gonna go around on the same little bit of mark around there. Forty-eight point yeah. that. It's actually, your untrained palate was correct. Forty-three. But isn't that surprising? Because it has so much spice coming in. I it's, think like yeah, the pungent. It's, it's, it's pungent. Yeah, yeah, it's got so, so much it flavor. keeps lingering, yeah. lingering and lingering. I feel like it keeps pushing forward from the back of my like my uh, the molars. Yeah, it goes, it goes, yeah. Through, it goes straight from your back molars of the palate, too. roof of the mouth, and then yeah. it just comes right down. Into so the tip my of your untrained tongue. palate was like yeah, the, that's your gut reaction. I think yeah. that's right. It's like. But then I always do the same thing. I overanalyze everything. I'm like, exactly. is that apple in that? Is that butter popcorn? Yeah. So, so maybe I was right and then like, well, I'm going to test you. Now. Like, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> no, so this is going to be higher probably. That's what I thought. I yeah. Know. No, no, no. I think most people will go into this whiskey and they're shocked to think, because for a lot of single malt fans, again, age is a big factor. The cask is a big factor. ABV is a huge factor. But huge. it's really, I mean, in some cases, that really makes a big difference. But in these whiskeys, you don't need to have high ABV. You don't need to have cask coming all the way in to give you all these no, flavors. Yeah. I'm enjoying yeah. the fruit notes a lot. Yeah. yeah. Because, you know, cask, of course, is a big, big, that, that's why we age with, that's why cask white dog becomes bourbon. That's yeah. why, you know what I mean? Uh, but, you know, you need, you need to learn how to balance these things. You know what I mean? 100%. It's all about balance. And like that, these whiskeys, it's fun to see whiskeys that are out of balance. Like mm. I've had a 10 year old single malt that was like, it looked as black as this peat. And it was like, so unbalanced. Yeah. But it was so rich. It was fun, but you wouldn't want to drink that you know, on yeah. a Sunday night where it's like, I'm just relaxing with a glass of whiskey. You know, like it's this new trend single. that they have that they do micro batches and they age them in smaller batches so yeah. that they could have more surface yeah, uh, yeah. area. You know, and it's like, Let's let's accelerate the process, and I'm one of those believers that you can't. You can't. You gotta, especially for this stuff, you gotta leave it. And 16 years, and that's yeah. minimum 16 years say. old. Yeah, there'll be older stuff in there as well. But it just comes out so beautiful. This is amazing, Rory. Yeah. Uh, thank you uh, for showing this one to us. Yeah. Um, I know you're in a time crunch. You wanna move on to the next? Let's one? do the last one. Let's do the last one because yeah. we have to try the smoky stuff. Because uh, <laughs> you've got, if you've not tried this one. This You're is amazing. Okay, let's so, do it. Okay. I uh, know that I was telling to Rory in the past, Will and I, my friend, you know, my other co-host, uh, we did a cocktail a long time ago when I was a bartender at a place that I don't want to remember. Uh, <laughs> it was a, a rough patch all in all my life. Yeah. Uh, but I had access to certain things, you know, because Will was already my friend and he would bring me stuff. And despite my situation shit there, yeah. I would have access to certain things. <laughs> and uh, so he brought the Ace Curiositas, you guys. Which curiositas. sounds way better than when I say it, Curiositas. <laughs> curiositas <laughs> sounds way better. So let's go with that. So um, yeah. so he brought me this bottle and I was like, I was in love with it instantly. I fell risky. in love with it. And uh, Will was like, uh, what should we do with this? Yeah. And I'm like, you know, I feel like it gets me this. And so I started using it, whipping on some stuff up and I was like, what if we, we pop some orange stuff going on and this mm -hmm. and that? And I started tasting. So we came up with this. His idea was like, so what's the name of that thing that goes under Scotland and friend like the, you know, like, like a mute? Yes, you know, like, I love so, that. It's, uh, wait, the commute. Yeah, it's the commute. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You so, nailed it. Yeah. So because we call it, then because we call it, like, it was, it had Grand Marnier, it was like, Let's call it the commute. Oh, the channel tunnel? Yes. The channel, yes, the commute, the, the back and forth between exactly. underneath from, yeah, ah, I love so that. So that was the whole idea because we use uh, Ben React and then we use Grand then, Marnier. Yeah. Also, there's a, there's a, you could have called it also this, the Old Alliance, which is between France and Scotland. Oh, That's a great yes. Old Alliance, yeah. but A-U-L-D, Old. That's a great yeah. one too. There you go. Man, next time you come, I'm going to recreate the cocktail for you because I think you would love it. I would love it. That sounds so good. And it was made with Curiositas. Curiositas. Oh, in, smoke and orange. Actually, Keep that in your head, smoke and orange. 
Let's do this whiskey because okay. that is so on the nose for that one. Yeah. Let me give us a little rinse and we'll come back, guys. Yeah. Yeah. You do the third pour, yeah. Let me let me get a little water. Yeah, have Mr. Momo. Yeah, baby. It's time to shine. My lover. For real. As I <laughs> drop the bottle. Sarah, I drop the ball. Sarah, he's my lover. <laughs> You're dub. He's a beautiful man. Yeah, absolutely. I'm gonna send this video to her. Directly. In the finger one. <laughs> now everybody else thinks, like, what's happening with the finger one? And then we're going to be like, don't worry about it. Don't worry, don't worry about it. This I'm going to post it. Don't worry. It's a rated R edition. <laughs> only only few could have access to it. By few, uh, Roberto's OnlyFans. If you, you, yeah, I'm, I'm gonna, guys, by the way, I'm going to do like, uh, what's that? Uh, Instagram now has their private thing that you can do, like subscription-based thing. There you go. That's going to go on that one. <laughs> If you, you want to see the, the finger dip, the finger subscription. Dip. Subscription. <laughs> Sounds it's ominous. rated R. Yeah. <laughs> well, so talking about Whoa. smoke. Whoa. Yes. Funky. Yeah. So. We funky go, smoke. Go, yeah, yeah, funky smoke. Right. So this is peated. The majority of whiskey going into this is peated, but not all of it is peated. So some yeah. of it will be unpeated, meaning that that is going to be driving the fruit forward, while some of the smoky whiskey will also drive the fruit, but also bring the, the smoke in. in crazy. So. We're using three casks to mature this. It's bourbon, sherry, and Marsala wine casks. Marsala. Ah, That's a new one to me, Marsala. Yeah. So you don't, you will not see that typically used a lot in Scotland. You'll maybe see it in like a, the odds here and there, limited release, but to see it in a core item, what the Marsala does is it gives you this like syrupy orange note. Oh, Will is on his ha <laughs> Please. hands and knees. Some, <laughs> some Porsche. Can I get some Porsche? It's Oliver. He's here. Oh, yes. Oh, lovely. An English man on his knees. I was hoping that Will Scotch soon. Whiskey. This is, I mean, amazing. I mean, you, you, can, you can grab a mic over there and mic right. yourself. Just wanted to come get a pour. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so this is charred orange. Imagine this is like for me sitting in like a, maybe like a cabin somewhere, a little log fire in the corner, and there's like some orange in yeah. the oven just dehydrating and getting a little bit of char on here. Dark chocolate, Dude, orange. It's so intense, like so good. Yeah. Man, I wish so we could smell that dark, dark chocolate that Chef makes. Oh, the great pairing, honestly. Yeah. yeah. Uh, man, what are Dude, you doing to so me, Roy? This is so rich. So, if it's you're doing so a penicillin good. cocktail, um, using Ben Riek original tan as like the base, uh, yeah. lemon ginger, and then floating a little bit of this on top. So good. Yeah, no, I, so, I would agree. So good. Do you have any plans on coming back soon to Houston, Roy? Wow, I think I've already had Jen and uh, and Will. I think they want me to come back. So I, I want to make a penicillin for you whenever you come back. I, I want to have that. it ready. I would love that. Oh, I have to do it. Yeah, yeah. we should do a Riek penicillin. I'll, yeah. I'll do a Riek penicillin. I'm going to have it ready. I'm going to perfect it. But it's not going to be a, just a, like a penicillin. Just be ready for some craziness. Please a go crazy with it. Penicillin. Yeah, like a wild one. <laughs> I'm one of those yes. persons, as you guys know. Well, I don't do that much on Instagram, but in other in, in competitions in competitions <laughs> and special events i, I do it. stuff that like it's like people so the other day i made a cocktail for will there it was a completely clear highball Ooh. it was like a carbonated like if i was giving you sparkling water highball. yeah and it was it tasted like chips and salsa with tequila what what was in it chips and salsa chips and salsa i love that and okay. it was completely clear and it was just like a That's sparkling. That's some like wizardry. I don't even know what you guys do. And I've heard <laughs> you guys have got really good water, so that probably contributes to it as well. Who knows? But yeah. That's... But I want to make something out of like. You should do it to get really wild with it. Probably uh, I'll find some like uh, empty caplets and put them as garnish on the freaking. Please. That would be. Oh, that'd be so cool. That no one's done that. Why is no I'm that giving yet? too much away. Yeah. <laughs> okay, that is an excuse for me to come back then. Yes, I, I need you see, back. Uh, the weirdest, wildest penicillin. Ever. Don't yeah, even, don't, don't. don't. <laughs> I think he's accepted the challenge. Like, I, I know. think he's on it. I think we have. Oh, yeah. yeah. You'll see next time. You'll see next time the most insane approach <laughs> to a penicillin. I love yes. that. Yes. Let's do it. Let's do it. it. Anyways, guys, I think uh, Rory is in a time crunch already. And uh, he has to go back. He's a very busy man. Oh my God, I, like I, could, I could sit here. Like, <laughs> a, this, can we just cancel everything else? I just let's I mean, do you guys, it. We've got the whiskey. So. Jen, he's canceling his flight. I'm staying here. We're just gonna we're just gonna roll on. Ooh, you're right. He gets a little phone call. Austin's seconds. waiting. Yeah. No, Austin's not gonna be happy if I stay here. So, okay. See, now everyone's from Texas as well. Yeah. Everyone. Yeah. <laughs> well, another excuse to come back. Well, hey guys, 
Pleasure hanging out with you guys. Thanks for having me. Yeah, Thanks, you, Cheers. Cheers. It's, it's, I I'd never expected this would develop into this. Mm. <laughs> good whiskey, good conversation, good people. That's how it all happens. Yeah, what a roller coaster, to be honest. Roller <laughs> coaster. Yeah, dude, that shit was escalated. Never <laughs> thought. In a good way, in a really good way. fingers and glasses, there was things happening. Yeah. yeah. Oh, <laughs> never thought that I would meet Jen like she would be, hey, I have these little samples for you, and then one month later, I I'm maybe meeting Rory. Like, oh, oh so, my God. Like, I'm so glad you guys have tried the Glen Glasses. We'll have to come back. Actually, here we go. You make a penicillin, I'll bring more Glen Glass up. We'll do a Glen Glass video. We'll do some penicillin. Oh, that's what I'm talking about. Yes. Yeah, like, oh, oh, oh. Now we're going to go over the top now. No, I'm going to have, you know, I got to make with Glen Glass, I, make, I got to make a, a tropical daiquiri, a Scottish daiquiri. Oh, you need to do like, yeah, like a tropical summer in Scotland or something like, like that. You a, can like the name. equivalent of daiquiri in that Glen Glass, the one that tastes like... Sand end, the tropical yeah, mango. Yeah, yeah. Sand, you need to do summer. That'd be amazing. Okay, I've got so many reasons to come back now. So, so many. I'll come back. Oh, cheers, guys. Well, cheers, thank you. guys. Thank you. Cheers again. Cheers. Thank you. Cheers. Ben React for the win and Glenn Lossop, guys. Cheers, guys. <laughs>